What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tetra Ninja and today's video is going to be a Destiny PvP oriented video and when I say PvP what I mean is the matchmaking aspect of this game so either the weekend trials of Osiris or the the monthly Iron Banner or just the general matchmaking such as Control or Clash and what I'm going to be talking about today is classes and class builds and perks and armor. I will be doing another video on weapon reforging and letting you know what weapons you guys should be using and well, how you should be rerolling them for what perks that you want that is PvP specific. But with the 2.0 update coming out in about a month right before the Taken King expansion pass releases, uh, basically this that video would be irrelevant <laughs> after the weapons update and rebalancing. So once after the rebalancing is done, I'll definitely check out and make that video for you guys. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about the three different classes, their subclasses, how you should spec them out for PvP, depending on the game type. And I'm not going to say that I know everything about this game, but I have been playing it basically since launch. And I spent a lot of times on forums reading about what perks are effective in whatever situations and what you should be using so I think I have a strong enough base to kind of give you guys uh, the right information and kind of put you on the correct path of what you guys should be choosing uh, so we're going to start off with the first character that I have ever created which was my warlock on launch if you want the other two classes you just click on the class box right here and it'll bring you to the section of the video where I talk about them. But like I said, for now, we'll start off with my Warlock. Alright, so this is my Warlock. The first thing we're going to be doing is adjusting the gear to make it more PvP centric. And for the Warlock, regardless of the subclass that I choose, I always use Void Fang Vestments. And the reason for that is that you pretty much will always have a grenade anytime in the game, especially after respawn or if you're playing a game type with a revive ability such as Elimination, Salvage, or Skirmish. If you get revived by one of your teammates, you will once again have a grenade. Even though it is strength, all strength, I generally stick with Indiscipline for all my perks. The, the perks that it has on this armor really pretty much outweigh that fact, in my opinion. So not only is it great for always having a grenade, it allows you to have more special ammo. Uh, because it has the ability of carry more ammo for special weapons. So when this game first came out, uh, green packages on the maps were everywhere and they respawn very, very quickly. But with a little bit of rebalancing a couple months ago, they removed some of the locations of the green packages and as well increased the timer for when they would respawn again. So that in some circumstances makes the amount of special ammo scarce and you don't want to run out of special ammo in very very difficult situations so I generally try to make sure that you get the most bang for your buck from a green package so the amount of ammo that you get from whatever package is dependent on the max amount of ammo you can carry so if you didn't have that carry more ammo for special weapons ability on this armor right here you would only get four rounds for whatever weapon you're using so you get four rounds for in general people stick with either sniper rifles or shotguns you'd only get four rounds for your sniper rifle or your shotgun but if you have the carry more special weapons ammo ability you're allowed to get six so that two extra round is pretty huge that's 33 percent more ammo from every single green package that you're going to be getting so that is massive. So in terms of the other armor, I generally think that you should go with boots that give you more heavy ammo because once again, when that purple package drops during a match, you want the max amount of ammo that you can get. For the gauntlets, you first want to choose what weapon that you're going to be using as your primary uh, the most. 
So I generally stick with hand cannons, so I stick with gauntlets that'll give me a faster reload on my hand cannons. Uh, ideally, you would want your secondary perk to either have increased melee attack speed or increased grenade throw distance, but none of my other gauntlets have hand cannon reload and those perks, so I stick with this one. This is like a future war cult one that I got out of a package and it had indiscipline, which is why I wanted to keep it. So if I were going to be playing Crucible right now, I would actually swap this helmet to my Crota helmet. Although it is from the previous DLC, it does have the grenade throw distance perk that I like. So once again, Void Fang vestments for either one of the subclasses. I know that Purifier Robes is awesome in that you can blind people when you come out of Radiance in the Sunsinger class, but in general I try not to Radiance while people are around me because when you Radiance there's a moment of vulnerability where you can't do anything and in most cases uh, people a lot of times can either shock on you or they'll just shoot you from a distance while you're radiancing, radiancing. so in terms of what you're going to be using more often I suggest you stick with the Void Fang Vessence because having a grenade the majority of the game is just so so handy and like I said you get more ammo for your, spe your special weapons. So in terms of subclasses we're going to be talking about the Void Walker class first. So the Void Walker class is more geared towards faster paced game types such as uh, control in Iron Banner or just regular control or clash. Um, with the more slower paced game types I recommend you use the Sun Singer class so in game types such as Elimination or skirmish and all that kind of stuff but we'll get to that a little bit later so we'll start off with we'll start at the left here i recommend that you use axiom bolt uh, especially paired with the void fang vestments because it actually gives you another seeker for your axiom bolt um what the axiom bolt is is basically when you throw the grenade um if there are enemies in the vicinity it will split into three different parts and it will track them which is awesome. So in general, when you throw grenades, you're usually throwing them at people behind cover. Um, so another option is to use the scatter grenade and some people pair that with the nothing manacles. I generally don't like scatter grenades because yes, if you're trying to go heads up against someone and you need to do a large amount of DPS uh, very, very quickly, uh, scatter grenades, I guess, would be useful, but when trying, they aren't very useful for trying to get people who are hiding behind cover. So I stick with Axiom Bolt. For the jump ability, Blink is my favorite jump in the entire game for PvP. If the Sunslinger class had the Blink ability, it would be completely overpowered and unbalanced. That's one thing that I wish was on the Sunsinger ability. Um, this, the blink ability allows you to blink shotgun. So you blink over top of a person's head, hit them with the shotgun, and if for some reason that doesn't kill them, you can go for a quick melee. And 99% of the time, they should be dead. So, and it allows you to dodge rockets, grenades and horseshoe rockets, as well as if you time it correctly, you can dodge a lot of supers such as Nova Bombs or Fist of Havoc so very very useful I just wish it was available on Sunsinger. In terms of what type of Nova Bomb you want it depends on the game type that you're playing so if you're playing Control where there's a flag that needs to be captured this one's very useful uh, to keep to keep people off your flag uh, it creates like a temporary AoE bubble that damages people if they try to get in it. But if you're playing uh, more of a slower paced game type and being able to kill the enemy is very, very crucial, um, I suggest you use Lance uh, because it just reduces the chances that they'll escape your Nova Bomb and because it travels faster and farther. So uh, general, my suggestion. For the melee ability, I suggest going with Lifesteal. Uh, in most cases, when you're trying to melee someone, they'll probably be meleeing you as well. Um, so with this, if you kill them, you immediately start regenerating your health, kind of like what you do with a red death. And during that time, you're probably low on health, so you don't want to be shot in the back <laughs> and die immediately. So this kind of gives you a better chance to survive. Um, Soul, rest in peace, and Surge, in my opinion, not that great. Uh, being able to run faster I guess helps 
eh. And reducing this, it doesn't read it. And the soul rest in peace doesn't reduce your charge for your Nova Bomb that significantly, in my opinion, to warrant it. Um, what I'm going to be telling you next for these two columns right here is pretty much transferable to the rest of the other classes and subclasses um, in terms of PvP. Um, uh, for PvP in general, what people recommend is cranking your armor and your agility to the highest point and they sacrifice recovery. And the reason for that is having your armor up high just allows you to sometimes survive the mark of the devourer on a thorn or if you are getting hit with a grenade. Uh, that little bit of armor helps you survive and being able to move around a, a map quickly is just very very useful it's just trying to maximize the perks that you're going to be using the most amount of time so recovery you're only going to be obviously recovering um, in situations where you kill a person and you need to hide in a corner but in most cases if you can hide in the corner you're gonna be safe most of the time, I'm not going to say all the time, but most of the time you'll be safe. So it's not an ability that you're going to be using uh, the majority of the time during Crucible match. So that's the thought rationale behind that. So like I said, that rationale transfers all through the other subclasses and subclasses. Uh, but with the Warlock, this is the best that you can kind of get to keep that armor as high as you can without sacrificing too much agility. So yeah. In terms of this tier right here I use Annihilate um, pretty self-explanatory makes your grenades deadlier makes your Nova Bomb deadlier um, you shouldn't ever miss with your Nova Bomb so this one kind of irrelevant and energy drain not a huge deal uh, yeah so in terms of the final tier I use Vortex Mastery uh, which enhances your Axiom Bolt, so paired with Void Fan Investments, it makes the Axiom Bolts pretty deadly. And if you're if you're playing Control and you have Vortex on your Nova Bomb, it just increases the the drain. Yeah. So general my suggestions for that uh, for the Void Walker class. Uh, let's move on to the Sun Singer class. So the Sun Singer class, what makes it so deadly is the grenades. The grenades for this class are off the charts good so use fireball grenade that's pretty much all i can say um lot some people use fusion grenades uh fusion grenades in slower type game types such as elimination or skir skirmish in general people don't let you stick them with grenades and you're trying to and usually you're approaching the other group slowly with your friends so you usually don't have the opportunity to try to tag them and this paired with the other perks makes it absolutely deadly. Uh, it's an instant hit so long as you throw them. So unlike the Axiom Bolt where the enemy has an opportunity to kind of run away from the Axiom Bolt, if you throw this at anywhere near the enemy, it will automatically hit them. So that's, I feel that's almost kind of non-negotiable. Uh, go with Fireball Grenade as your grenade. Um, this one is up to preference. The gliding, depending on what you like, is what you choose doesn't have that much of an impact. I Like I said, I really wish Blink was here. I definitely would be choosing that all day. Uh, in terms of the Radiance ability, uh, I go with Fireborn. Uh, and I recommend this especially in Elimination game types. Um, just what I recommend is don't Fireborn when you're near a group of enemies because when you Fireborn, there's this moment where you can't do anything and the enemy has ample opportunity to throw grenades and focus fire on you when you fireborn try to fireborn when the enemy is kind of away from you that's just my general recommendation <laughs> um for scorch um i use flame shield um in the quote unquote competitive community in the competitive community there's really only two classes to use either you use the sun singer warlock or you use the blade dancer uh hunter and so since everyone is using Blade Dancer in the in that game type, a lot of the warlocks use solar wind. So as the hunter is blade dancing towards you or arc blading towards you, the solar wind allows you to knock them back and allows you to focus fire and 
gives you a better opportunity to kill them. But since we're not playing ultra competitive destiny here, uh, flame shield, getting a flame shield every time you melee someone is really, really useful, especially after your radiance because your scorch becomes a one hit kill. Uh, to any enemy type regardless of armor build and if you're bailing someone you're most likely in a very tight situation where you're probably losing health and being able to put up a shield almost pretty much guarantees you the melee fight unless something goes horribly horribly wrong um, for once again these two classes keep your armor up as high as possible um, and try to keep your agility up as well uh, that this is the best way you can spec it on a warlock to keep the armor up as high as possible for this tier right here I use Viking funeral um, this allows people that you ignite so people that you melee uh, they burn a little bit longer um, it just does a little bit more damage over time not only does it damage them over time but it delays them the ability to recover because they can't start recovering until they stop burning out so yeah Radiant will not that useful in PvP, in my opinion, and generating one orb from one Scorch attack, not that useful, in my opinion. So this is this last tier is the one that I think the most people make the most mistake. A lot of people use Gift of the Sun, which gives you an extra grenade. Um, but like I said earlier, the deadliest thing about the Sunsinger class is its this ability right here, the fireball grenade. This combined with this is almost completely overpowered. You can actually one hit kill a low armor built hunter with one of these grenades. And since in Crucible a lot of time you are playing hunters, that ability is completely it's really useful. It's really, really useful. And you're with compared with coupled with void fang investments, you're gonna be you're gonna be holding a lot of grenades most of the time, anyways. So having that extra grenade is not that important so long as you're constantly respawning with grenade charge. But this this is awesome um, in elimination game types. It's so useful, especially it chains just like the uh, the arc grenade on the on the hunter blade dancer class. So you can hit multiple peoples with it. It'll actually chain amongst them and it deals a massive amount of damage that burns over time. So once again, reducing their ability to cool down and recover. So yeah, that is my general recommendation for the class builds on the Warlock. It really depends on what game type you're playing. In general, even though if I'm playing Control or Clash, I actually stick with Sunsinger regardless. But if you are a really big Blink fan like I am as well, then Void Walker is awesome. And being able to super instantly kill people obviously is useful as well. But yeah, let's move on to the next class, which is the Titan. Alright, so this is my Titan. We're going to be taking a look at the Defender subclass first. So if you're running the Defender subclass, the only thing I can recommend is that you do use the shotgun. Because the people, there are two main reasons people run the Defender subclass. Either they are banking on people entering their bubble foolishly. So you want to be able to do that huge amount of impact right away and damage right away. Or you're using it to capture a point such as in salvage or control. Um, so, but once again, they, their options are to either super you, destroy the bubble, or enter the bubble. And if you're in the bubble, having a shotgun is very, very handy. Uh, in terms of the armor, what I recommend is that you either use the Crest of Alpha Loopy or the Armamentarian. The Armamentarian gives you t ability to carry two extra grenades, which is very useful, especially if you're on the Striker subclass get that we'll get to that a little bit later and just like the void fang vestments it gives you the ability to carry more ammo for special weapons once again it gives you two extra rounds for every single green ammo pack that picks up that you can pick up in a match so very very useful um if you are more geared towards uh more uh be support role especially if you're going to combine this with the defender subclass 
You can use the Crest of Alpha Loopy. Once again, it gives you the carry more ammo for special weapons ability. And with this chest as well, normally when you pop a bubble, you create automatically create two motes of light for your teammates. But with this armor, you actually create three. So once again, playing in that kind of a support class role uh, for your teammates, making sure that they get all their supers as quickly as possible. And as well, if you want to run this Defender subclass and you want to kind of either deter people from entering your video, uh, entering your bubble, or for some reason they still want to enter your bubble, uh, regardless, you can also put on the Helm of Saint-14, uh, which gives you the ability to automatically blind them. And at that point, it's just fish in the barrel, especially if you have a shotgun. So I, but in general, I try to, I probably would stick with the crest if I was running the defender class in a crucible match, just because creating orbs is awesome. And without that, without either one of these chess pieces, I would only be getting four rounds for my sniper rifle or my shotgun, which I don't like at all. In terms of specking out, um, this is really dependent on what you want to play. Um, I actually do recommend, depending once again on the game type, if you are playing uh, more of a slower paced game, go with the suppressor grenade, such as elimination or salvage or skirmish. Faster paced game, you, you can always use a magnetic grenade. It's very satisfying sticking someone with a magnetic grenade. In my opinion, the grenades for the Fender class aren't that great, so yeah. Uh, for the bubble ability, I highly recommend using Armor of Light. Um, weapons of Light is not that useful in PvP. Uh, the only situation where I find that Weapons of Light is useful is that if you do pop it, um, every, uh, if you are in a Weapons of Light buff time, it actually creates, it makes all your sniper shots one hit kills. So it's useful in that exact scenario. But in general, if you're, if you're using a Defender class, you're playing more of a passive role. So I try to go Armor of Light, which gives you more armor while you're inside the bubble. And it also allows you to survive supers as well, if you get supered. Um, in terms of the, the melee ability, I generally stick with Unbreakable. I generally don't melee that people that often, <laughs> to, to be honest. So I stick with Unbreakable. Once again, with the same reasoning as I had with the Warlock, armor is cranked up as high as it possibly can get, as well as agility, while sacrificing recovery. Uh, I use Bastion for the Defender class because it keeps your bubble up as long as possible. Um, this is not that... Gift of the Void isn't that great in PvP because in most cases people aren't shooting your, your bubble at all. They're not using high DPS weapons, just shooting the bubble because if you play this game long enough, you know that's not going to be effective. Uh, in the last tier, I use, uh, I guess since uh, I this was specced out for PvE a little bit later, um, I would use probably Untouchable, uh, just because it makes it last longer. Um, Iron Harvest, it's very situational, you don't always have heavy ammo. So yeah, generally I don't try to use the defender class that much in pvp i generally stick with the striker and i compare i stack the striker ability always with the armamentarium just because the grenades for the striker are very very good as well the lightning grenades are awesome uh they do a heavy amount of damage and they continually if you have and they can are continually firing as well for a good length of time so if you throw uh, a lightning grenade, you can stick it to a person who is down uh, or the area around them that's down so they can't go for the quick revive without shooting the lightning grenade first. Um, so, and you can actually throw the lightning grenade directly at them as well, and it'll do heavy damage. In terms of the jump ability, I use increased control. Um, once again, based on your preference. For the Fist of Havoc, what I use is Shockwave. Because a lot of the time when you're rushing an enemy, it's always very obvious when a titan is about to smash 
hit his fist of havoc. And in most cases, people are focus firing on you, and you may not always have the opportunity to get as close as you want. So with Shockwave, so long as you're moderately close and the enemy is in front of you, you'll ensure that you actually kill them. Um, for Storm Fist, I use Fist of Havoc. So in most cases, do doing AoE damage against a melee person is not a huge deal because melee situations are usually just one on one, not one v three. And if it's one v two or three, in most cases you're not winning anyways. Um, this one overload, you're relying on chance, so I don't recommend that. And once again. High emphasis on heavy armor and heavy agility. Uh, headstrong versus it's in this one. It's really a comparison between headstrong and aftershocks. Aftershocks is useful once again in control and as well when you're fisting someone. It actually gives you an opportunity to kind of keep an AOE damage on them on their orb to make sure that they can't regenerate or they can't be revived. So I try to use this and headstrong. I don't usually find that I need that extra leap to get a fist to work, so that's what I generally stick with. And this one, just probably the best one. I, I don't shoulder charge people, it's not my thing, running around shoulder charging people. It's fun, I must admit it is very fun to shoulder charge someone, but it's not the greatest, uh, the highest percent to play uh, all the time. Uh, being able to be unstoppable during a Fist of Havoc is, you get like, being, the Fist of Havoc is so broken is that there's pretty much nothing you can do barring a Nova Bomb to kill someone. And even if you Nova Bomb them, most likely you're going to be trading a kill. I've Golden Gun a person in Fist of Havoc and it still doesn't kill them. So generally stick with Unstoppable in my opinion. So yeah, that is the Titan class and its perks. Uh... And what I recommend for you, you guys using. Let's move on to the Hunter class, which is the dominant class in PvP Crucible. All right, so we are now on everyone's favorite Crucible bro, the Hunter. Uh, so we're we'll start off with the Gunslinger class. Um, in terms of armor, I was using the Crest of Alpha Loopy for a while. Uh, mainly because it has that carry more special ammo ability and the lucky raspberry despite giving you a grenade every single time you respawn is missing that crucial special ammo ability up until last week when it was sold by brother Vance and the trials of Osiris so even though I don't have it here I now have it on the boots uh, they do not stack so if I were to do perks do not stack so I would not get heavy more heavy ammo if I have two pieces of armor that give me heavy ammo. So I have myself covered there. Um, if you want the quick revives, that's always very useful, especially in revive-oriented game types. But once again, having the the grenade at all times, especially if you're running the Blade Dancer class, uh, the Arc Bolt grenade is very very deadly and having the lucky raspberry makes it even more deadly so <laughs> that's what i recommend in this right here you could also if for some reason you don't want to be a team player uh or have a lot of ammo you can always give yourself an extra shot for your golden gun but once again you probably get supers maybe two or three times a game so not that it's not a, it's not worth it in my opinion uh to taking away from always having lots of ammo. And once again with the gauntlets, hand cannon reload, I do wish I had increased grenade toss or increased melee ability, but I do have it as indiscipline, which I do like. Um, I'm still waiting for Brother Vance to sell an armor arm type with hand cannon reload and increased special reload, but uh, gonna have to rely on RN Jesus for that one I think one of these days so in terms of the spec out for the incendiary grenades this is once again up for preference and up for interpretation and argument and all that kind of stuff once again I try to use my most cases I'm using grenades to either throw directly at people or hitting them behind cover 
Um, with the trip, so I generally stick with the incendiary grenade. With the trip mine, you're going to be trying to predict where people are going to be running. So, and in some cases, I guess if you can throw, if you have a direct line of where they're hiding behind cover, you can maybe hit the trip mine there. Uh, but the trip mine requires them to pass it, whereas the incendiary grenade just works as a traditional grenade and just blows up. Um, so I stick with that one, but you can use either or. It really doesn't matter for, to me. Um, I use triple jump just because that's generally what people use. Um, being able to jump lots of spaces vertically is useful. <laughs> I guess in general people use triple triple jump. It's just uh, yeah, general consensus. With the golden gun, I use dead eye, and you're probably saying this: you don't need dead eye. You need to learn to aim scrub. Um, with dead eye, it becomes you can snapshot. Your golden gun so you can run around a corner um, and aim down sight and the auto aim with the dead eye will basically make your life with the golden gun easy peasy um, the other two perks aren't really that useful combustion I guess if you have two people that are kind of standing beside each other uh, but the other person usually only dies if they are already hurt and reduces the cooling it, this doesn't work that well gunfighter your gunfighter doesn't reduce the cooling that much basically you want to max amount maximize the amount of kills that you can get and dead eye ensures that you get it so yeah uh throwing knife uh i don't actually throw knives that often um this will never usually never happen it's become relevant so it's almost useless and Precision kills, you very rarely often precision kill someone with a throwing knife. So this one is the lesser of evils <laughs> doing damage over time. Uh with the grenade with sorry, with the throwing knife just reduces the amount of time that they can it increases the amount of time that they'll take to recover. Uh if you do not kill them. Uh, so yeah. Um once again, same reasoning as the other classes, increased armor. Low agility, uh, increased armor and agility, low recovery. This, I like I said, I don't, I don't play throwing, I don't do throwing knives that often, so this is not that big of a deal. Um, uh, generally, by the time like this works well, this ability works well in PVE, but if you precision kill someone, it usually you don't have enough time to run up to find another person before that buff has run out so this will get this keyhole ability once again the lost our two evils and get you those sweet collateral <laughs> those sweet collateral golden guns um and this one yeah you can get i don't use gold i didn't i don't use throw knives and so i don't need an extra one and i guess you could use this one if you wanted but I, I think the only reason I use this, range isn't a huge importance of the golden gun, but the only reason I keep it on this one is just because it increases my recovery time just a tiny bit. So yeah. Uh, but usually when I'm playing Crucible, uh, especially on the Hunter, I stick with the Blade Dancer class. Uh, mainly for two main reasons. Uh, well, a couple. Many, many reasons, actually. I'm not going to say that. The many, many reasons. So Arc Bolt Grenade is very, very useful allows you to chain grenade attacks. If you throw them at a group of enemies, you'll completely demolish their health bars. That arc bolt grenade will pass right through them. Blink, just like the Warlock on the Voidwalk class, is very, very useful for law situations. Blink shotgun, escaping rockets, escaping supers, um, confusing the enemy, all that kind of stuff is very, very useful. Uh, this should be here. I use Razor's Edge. Uh, the reason why I use Razor's Edge is, in most cases, uh, when you're blade dancing, uh, people know that you're blade dancing, and when they see you coming at them, if they have a shotgun, they'll break it out. Uh, what you need to do is you don't try to risk it and try to dodge the shotgun or try to time it. What you do is you stop in front of them and you, you throw down R2 attack uh, when you're out of range for their shotgun. So you can create a wave of destruction that goes travels along the ground. So you keep yourself out of their range of their shotgun and allow you to stay in your Blade Dancer class a little bit longer. 
this backstab ability, this is actually a band ability in Ultra Competitive Destiny. Um, it gives you significantly more damage with a blink strike. So if you melee someone in the back with this ability equipped, uh, it's a one shot, one hit KO. So that's why it's banned because they try to balance things out. But the other abilities, you don't need to go invisible while you're playing PvP. And this one generally get more DPS in most cases. Once again, uh, adhering to the theory of keeping your armor and agility as high as possible. And Quick Draw is <laughs> so amazing. Quick Draw allows your weapons to ready immediately. So that's officer. So what you notice when you have this ability equipped, when you're walking or you're sprinting, your weapon draws up faster. So it allows you to ready your, your weapon to be fired a lot quicker than normal and this ability actually also stacks with the quick draw ability that is sometimes on different weapons and different weapon perks i think i might do i have one right here do i have my bt yeah here it actually stacks oh i don't have it here never mind i don't have it here um it stacks with the other quick draw that you can fi sometimes find on weapons so bar none the best ability in this tier right here um, slide shotgun, I guess, is your agility is already really high, so you should be able to slide pretty far already. Uh, but quick draw, once again, this ability is also banned in ultra competitive destiny circles. <laughs> um, the final tier, um, it once again depends on what game type you are playing. If you're playing a game type with a lot of respawning and a lot of enemies, um, you want to maximize the amount of kills. Encore is very useful. For extending the arc blade uh, just be careful though because you don't regenerate health <laughs> so uh, yeah it's, it's kind of hit and miss <laughs> sometimes even if you're playing those game types where it's suited for you do wish you have the hungering blade so what the hungering blade is it works like the lifesteal ability or the red death after you kill someone you start immediately regenerating health um, if you're playing elimination or smaller game types such as uh, skirmish or salvage definitely use this one just because there aren't that many enemies on the map, there are only three of them, so you're not you don't probably need to kill more than three of them. Um, but yeah, Hungering Blade. Uh, if you if you can finesse it, use Encore. If you can't finesse it, it's you're never wrong using Hungering Blade. So yeah, that is pretty much it. My thoughts on all three classes, their subclasses, what perks you should be using in combinations of what type of armor you should be using. Um, once again, I will be doing a weapons guide on rerolling the different types of weapons, what's most popular. Right now, shotguns and snipers are dominating. Uh, it's not, snipers, shotguns, and rocket launchers are dominating PvP. Um, I will, will, like I said, I will do a reroll guide and tell you what weapons you should be using, but that will come after the Destiny 2.0 patch after the weapons go through. A bit of rebalancing so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video hopefully you found it useful and enlightening and help you guys get to the lighthouse during trials of osiris or just increase and boost up your kd in whatever crucible match you're playing so yeah those are my thoughts like i said hopefully you guys enjoyed and i shall see you guys next time all right as always have a fantastic day